Hi, it's James from Active, and I wanted to answer some questions that we received from you guys based on the last video that we did about the Active 1800 pressure washer. So a lot of people have been questioning how we've been able to achieve these great numbers, which are you know, up to 1100 PSI and 2.0 GPM. And the secret really is in the patented five piston pump. So in short, more pistons generate more flow at a given pressure. And that really is where the secret is. And so at a given energy level from the, uh, from the motor, um, we're basically able to push more water at a given time through that patented pump. And that's how we're able to get those numbers. Even though the V52 Active 1800 kind of got, uh, gets the most reviews from detailers because detailers care the most about high water flow in order to generate a lot of foam and to rinse the car off, it's absolutely a great product for jobs around the house. And here's why. First of all, 1000 PSI is more than enough for almost every job you'd have around the house, short of stripping paint or doing some really big job that you probably want to use a gas pressure washer for anyway. So in the category of electrics, 1000 PSI is more than enough for most jobs. Now, the high flow will enable you to do those jobs faster because there's actually more water coming out at any one time. So whether it's sweeping your patio from leaves and trying to night do a nice clean or cleaning out your garbage bins or windows or in your garage, the Active 1800 is actually going to help you do the job faster than a pressure washer, which has, you know, a little bit of a higher pressure rating, but half of the water flow. We've gotten a lot of questions about comparing ourselves to some of the Ryobi units that actually generate about 1800 PSI, but about 1.1 GPM. So our approach is obviously opposite from that, which is we're at about 1,000, 1,100 PSI, but 2.0 GPM. So, you know, what's the difference? Well, the main difference is the amount of water going through when you're trying to clean something actually dictates how much uh, cleaning efficiency you have. So even though with the two ratings, the normal rating of cleaning units are about the same, there's an alternate rating called impact force that when you calculate the actual cleaning effectiveness of more water, the 2.0 GPM uh, total cleaning units uh, comes out ahead. And that's kind of um, from a real world sense how you can tell the pressure washer is actually more effective at cleaning. This is one of those marketing and industry rating things that I'll try to do my best to explain here. So a lot of companies use what's called peak PSI to rate their product. So again, you see a lot of people out there with 1800, 2000, 2200 PSI units, but effectively none of them can hit those numbers under real operating conditions. So the peak number actually represents the pressure that's built up in the pump at any one time that can be immediately released when you're pulling the trigger. So that might be true in a very small instant, but what's really more important is what is the actual operating pressure. And for the vast majority of units out there, the operating pressure is a lot lower than what you see on the box. The other way people kind of fudge these numbers is they show a very high GPM rating, sometimes 2, 2.2, 2.3, when in reality, that GPM rating, first of all, is likely when they're using their soap dispenser or kind of a low setting with no pressure. But when you actually have the peak or high operating pressure, their GPM ratings will drop probably to one or even under that. So what's really important is that you investigate the pressure washer's actual operating pressure and actual operating GPM. So still the question is why do we rate our active 1800 at 1800 PSI if the operating pressure is really only at about 1000 or 1100? Well, there's two reasons. One, the active 1800 can achieve pressures of up to 1800, 
um, but you have to switch the nozzles and it will be operating under a much lower GPM rating. Second, purely is marketing. You know, there's a lot of people and customers out there that just would not buy a pressure washer rated at 1100 when the rest of the market is rating at 1800 or 2000 or 2500 which are completely bogus numbers. So quite honestly it is a bit of a concession to marketing as well. I think it's pretty interesting what's happened over the last few years and so many users are doing their own reviews of pressure washers and getting you know, getting a lot of different types of results using different kinds of tests. And there really is no standardized test, at least on the internet. So I think the way we explain the variance in ratings from anywhere between 800 to 1100 PSI and call it 1.8 to 2.0, first I'm gonna say they're not really controlled scientific tests. However, what's important is, is that if you're testing multiple units under the same conditions, I think you'll find that the active's performance, especially as it relates to GPM, will still be consistently more than the competition. We also can't control for whether the user is using a standard 15 amp plug circuit or maybe they're using an older circuit or whether they're using the right nozzle or whether they have the correct inlet water pressure. Those things can all impact the performance of the unit. So the Active V52-1800 comes with a universal motor and of course the induction motor or brushless motor um, has a reputation for longer life, more power and you know quieter operating. The reality is like this. The way the pumps are designed, they have about an effective life of let's say 75 to 100 hours. A universal motor has approximately the same effective life. Induction motors or brushless motors, they last longer, but for most cases, the pump won't last as long as the induction motor would either. Let me take you back in history as well. So most pressure washers have their origins in Europe, where it's a 220 or 240, 20, 240 volt system. With that much power, you can take advantage of the benefits of an induction motor. So back in the 90s and early 2000s, most pressure washers were coming from Europe. So they just came with induction motors. And what you had really were these motors that were drawing a lot of current and a lot of times tripping breakers. Um, and they're more expensive because they're a lot heavier than a universal motor. When more and more pressure washers started coming from China, they really obviously were built for a lower cost and built to be a bit lighter and so forth and that's why you get the advent of the universal motor pressure washer probably in the mid 2000s is when they started coming up on mass so today if you were to use an induction motor versus a universal motor the induction motor even though it probably being maybe 50 percent more in terms of cost and may last longer and sound nicer you're not going to get 50 percent more performance not even close and from a longevity point of view you're really not going to get the benefits of an induction motor because the pump itself is not going to last that long anyhow. We've gotten the question from some of our earlier customers on why the price of the V52 has jumped from $150 all the way to $200 where it is now. And there's a couple answers to that question. First and foremost is from when we started this project in late 2019, early 2020, the cost of the product by itself has risen approximately 15% due to rise in the raw materials and rise in, you know, really the Chinese currency. The second big impact has been the cost of freight. So the cost of a container of bringing a pressure washer from China to North America has risen about three times to four times, if you can even get a container these days. And both those things have impacted the price of the unit to a great degree. We're also getting a lot of questions from users on, are we going to expand the lineup to include other types of units or other form factors? And the short answer is yes. So we manufacture and design lots of pressure washers for many clients around the world. 
And so we're constantly looking at what is trending in the market or what is doing really well. And we will be coming out with additional units in the near future. Of course, the focus is gonna be with our five piston pump. The focus is gonna to try to deliver more performance or more durability at a valuable price uh, for our customers. So we get this question a lot because we know a lot of our customers are buying the main unit, tossing the accessories and putting their own higher quality hose or higher quality gun. And so we're getting the question, can they just buy a bare unit without the accessories? And the answer is a bit tricky. According to CSA, which is the standards agency that regulates the certification of pressure washers, there are rules around whether we can sell a unit without the hose and the gun. And right now the answer we're getting is we cannot. And that's why we're selling it with the accessories. Now, we get a lot of questions on, you know, we get a lot of critique around the quality of the accessories. And this is what I'll say. I think the accessories, whether it's the hose and the gun and the foam blaster, they're really built to satisfy that user that just wants a all-in-one package, everything ready to go. Of course, there's a lot of you customers out there that really want better, better performance, better hose, better guns, and are very much into upgrading their unit. What we didn't want to do was then add those expensive accessories where many customers are just really not going to appreciate or get the value out of those accessories. And so we've chosen good accessories, certainly not the best accessories, and so we're leaving it up to the customer to decide if they want to upgrade their unit at this time. We know there are a lot of detailers, professional detailers out there that are using the Active V52 as a backup unit or as their main unit. And even though the unit is not rated for commercial use and is really geared towards the DIY home unit, homeowner, um, we get a lot of requests for a commercial style unit of the Active 1800. And the good news is we are currently working on one. And really the big differences are going to be the effective life hour of the unit. So a commercial unit user is gonna use their unit for hours in a day. And we're trying to build a cost-effective unit that can last up to two to 300 hours. Of course, made it to a motor that also can last that long and might be better suited to, again, uh, that is using the unit for uh, many hours at a time. Other markets outside of North America have been asking us if we can make a 220 or 240 volt version of the Active 1800, and certainly we can. And so right now we're in the middle of engineering some of that product for these other markets and setting up distribution. So I'd advise you to just check back here and we will tell our customers of when launch dates and in which countries the unit will be available. So we're really pleased with the response we've gotten from the uh, from our customers on the Active 1800 and the V52 and we're really developing more products that we think are going to delight the customer in the same way the Active 1800 has done. And I think what that means is, you know, trying to really deliver semi-professional or semi-commercial type performance at a more significant value and price point. So the Active 1800 is really delivering Kranzler type performance at a retail value. Now, you're not gonna have the same durability, you're not gonna have the same life, and of course the Kranzler is a very, very nice unit, but it's also five times the price. So I think there is the opportunity to deliver that type of value in other products in the segment. So we've been looking at how we can improve things like the gun. Um, we've been looking at things like the hose and connection points. Um, so those will all be products that will be coming out under the active brand in the near future. And we think they're going to deliver significant performance and significant value in the market. The V51 is really the smaller wall mounted unit that we've developed. The V52 is the active 1800 that most of uh, the people know. The difference between the two is really in the size of the motor. So the V51 has a smaller universal motor, it's lighter, it puts out a bit less power, and therefore a bit less performance. 
The V52 has a bigger universal motor that just puts out more power and therefore getting better performance out of the unit.